A very warm welcome and a sincere thank you to join us today at Think Next. My name is Raf Peters. I'm in charge of cloud and cybersecurity at Proximus Next. And I'm joined today by Gregory Gruber, Deputy Director Cloud, Proximus Next, as well as Kurt Cornelis, CEO of Satellic. And I will introduce both gentlemen a bit later on. The remote control is not working. Apologies for the technical delay. Ah, voilà. Uh, apologies for that. Welcome in an era that is characterized by digital transformation. As businesses continue to evolve, as employees continue to be mobile, and data appl and applications continue to move to the cloud, data and information hold a central piece in all of that. At Proximus Next, we have a unique position to help our customers with data and information. As we are a telco innovator on one side, as well as an IT integrator or an IT specialist on the other side. Which means that we can help customers with data and information from the conception of it at the edge of our networks, while transporting it securely to an, an, a location where it's stored and eventually computed or used in public as well as private environments. When customers are evaluating solutions they want to use to store their applications and data, we look at four different axes that are main decision criteria for our com for companies. On one side, balancing control and independency with feature richness and innovation. On the other side, taking an eye on cost and scalability, and certainly, and not least, not forgetting about security and compliance. At Proximus Next, we are convinced that no single solution offers the perfect match for all applications, all petabytes of data, and all workloads. And that's why we have developed a hybrid product portfolio and solution portfolio to help you with the challenges at hand. On compliance and cybersecurity, we cannot forget the near and distant legislation that is coming towards us. That's why in our overall product portfolio we have chosen to build sovereignty into our solutions, making sure that we can deliver cloud environments on Europe's terms, protecting data and applications and workloads of our customers. In order to do all of that, there is a hybrid strategy that we embark at Proximus Next. Ranging all the way from traditional environments to cutting edge and from current environments to future environments for our customers. We have a large amount of expertise and knowledge to help you do all of that. The last ones as a full flavor public solution. Also on public technology, we include sovereignty. And I will introduce Gregory Gruber to you in a second, who will explain more of that. A few highlights. One of the proud solutions that we have built, called Cloud Fusion, is our Proximus Next private cloud environment. And it comes in different flavors, as you can see. It offers the needed components as a home for your data and applications. And it comes in a dedicated as well as in a shared flavor, along with a billing model that will help you scale while you grow or scale while you, while you scale down. Not only have we developed the perfect locations for your data applications and workloads, we have also developed the perfect tool to manage your workloads and applications, a solution called Cloud Management Platform. And it will help you to manage and scale. It will help to take complexity to simplicity. It will help to reduce manual processes and automate them. It will help you cover security issues that you have at hand 
while making sure that costs are controlled along the way. Looking into our two sovereign cloud solutions, I gladly introduce you to Gregory Gruber, who will explain a little bit more on how we introduce sovereignty in public cloud and public cloud technologies while being used. Gregory, the floor is yours. Thank you, Raf. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, before jumping into the, the, the sovereign cloud solution, let's define together what we mean about sovereignty in the cloud. The first... Uh, the sovereignty can be defined using three pillars. The first pillar is the data sovereignty. By maintaining your data in your country under the local, local reg uh, regulation and in autarky. The second pillar is the software sovereignty. Software sovereignty with the workload running in a portability and uh, operate interoperability between cloud. It enables the, the, the workload shift without any application refactoring. And the last pillar is related to the operational sovereignty with the visibility and control on the provider operation. Operation should be independent from the technology vendor. That is the sovereign cloud and the deficient for us. We jump on the first solution. First solution will enable the data sovereignty and the first solution is based on Microsoft encrypted public cloud. This solution is based on four ingredients. The first ingredient is the confidential computing. Confidential computing enable encryption of your data into memory, what we call data in use. It reinforces the data in REST encryption and data uh, in transit encryption. With the enterprise key management system, you keep your keys outside the public cloud provider. With the sovereign landing zone, you reinforce your policy, your security policy, and with attestation, you control the integrity of the data sovereignty. This uh, encrypted public cloud from Microsoft is available on numbers of services, like standard services with a virtual machine, with container, but also with advanced services like SQL, always encrypted. Let, let's now move on the, on the second solution. The second solution is based on okay. the second solution is based on Google. We call Google Distributed Cloud Hosted. It's a, a subset of Google Cloud features running in a full disconnected cloud without any access from Google. This solution is an answer for the three pillars and uh, and the product delivered by Google is hardware and software. The installation and the management is done by Proximus, exclusively by Proximus. The customers contract with Proximus and only with Proximus. Google is take part, it doesn't take part and doesn't know the customer name. In terms of security, the platform is designed to meet numbers of regulation with strong uh, security requirements. It's the case with the ISO 27K, but also with NIST 800 and the EL6 from the US DOD for secret level uh, classified information. The multi-tenancy is done with uh, physical segregation and logical segregation. Each customer has his own control plane. The customers can manage the workload is workload through this control plane using the classic uh, ClickOps with the user interface or integrate 
with the infrastructure as code and make cloud automation a reality. Regarding the services running on this platform, of course, we see the standard services like the network and security with software design, with the virtual machine, with container, with Kubernetes, of course, but also advanced services like, SQ, like database as a service, with PostgreSQL, with AlloyDB, and even Oracle, Oracle as a service. Let's jump off on a, on a topic that some people take attention is AI ML with Vertex AI ML. With this cloud, the cloud for the GPU uh, processing is based on NVIDIA technology and it supports uh, a number of services coming from <coughs> Vertex AI. The first service is to create and uh, to give the capability to your data scientist to have a Jupyter Lab as a service and create training or deep learning using AutoML with pipeline and prediction. The second topic is the pre-trained services coming from Google. These pre-trained services like computer vision with imaging, with uh, speech to text, with translation, there is many others that run through API. It means that in your business application, with few lines of code, you can integrate this service in your application and make automatic translation of any document or any voice recording. This is what we call the sovereign cloud with Google GDCH. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like you to uh, warmly welcome uh, next to me Kurt Cornelis. Kurt Cornelis is the CEO of Satellic. Kurt, a sincere thank you for being here together with us. Thank you for having um, me. Can you tell us a bit more on Satellic, Kurt, and what the type of business is that you are in? Yes. Um, well, Satellic is uh, first of all a joint venture between T-Systems International and Strabach Group from Austria, infrastructure company. And together we uh, were awarded the uh, Belgium Kilometer Charging System for Heavy Goods Vehicles in 2013 here in Belgium. Um, it's a contract uh, based on a DBFMO uh, type contract, which means that we have designed, built and financed the project up front for the government. And currently we're in a maintenance and operations mode. Uh, we do this for a period of 12 years. We're now in year eight and then some possible extensions. Um, it goes without saying that a tolling system uh, is a critical infrastructure for a government because there is a lot of money generated in such a system. Uh, I think last year we were around 830 million euros generated by just trucks driving on Belgian uh, network. And uh, therefore, we needed a, a decent solution, a, a solution which was really robust and reliable. And I think if we go to the next slide, uh, Raf, then I can uh, give you some, uh, some elements for that. I can see it here as well. So, Sh yeah. Sway switch sides. Yeah, that's maybe easier. Thanks. Uh, so, the system is up and running 24-7. Uh, that means that, not in, uh, unlike other countries, they do some, some uh, relay uh, programs. Here, it's always up and running, which means that the money flow is continuous. That also means that we need to continuously measure, calculate and collect money. Collect money to disburse the already the next day to our three regions in Belgium because it's a regional project, not a federal one. Um, yeah, that makes us a key economic player for the Belgian government uh, and, and the three regions, uh, therefore. Um, so there is a lot of pressure, a lot of meticulous monitoring and, and measuring on this system to make sure that the money flow keeps going. Um, the solution that we, we built with, uh, with Proximus uh, allowed us to, up until this year, year eight of operations, have not a single second of downtime. That's quite remarkable if you compare tolling systems uh, across Europe. Um, and that is also what makes us now a strong partner for uh, the, the, the Belgian uh, government. 
Um, maybe some figures. Um, Satellic has uh, around 800,000 onboard units, which are the registration devices that work via GNSS connection, uh, uh, made available to the, to the Belgian government. 700,000 were actually injected into the network. And so far, uh, well, we're on our way to the 30th uh, billion kilometer driven. That's quite impressive. And so on a daily basis, we collect 2.2 million of, of uh, tolling. Uh, amount. So you can see that the focus on such a project is, uh, is, is quite high. In order to support Satellic with such a high availability environment, a robust and reliable IT solution is needed. Can you explain a bit the criticality on the building blocks in IT? Yeah, sure can. So in, in the design phase of, of the project, um, we, we, of course, after selecting uh, Proximus as our uh, ICT partner, we set together and we made a, a very robust design as you call it uh, but also because of the contract requirements that we had they were quite stringent the government wanted to build in the maximum of guarantees to make sure that we had a system which was up and running at all times so we had to have a two, two data center approach in an active active setup meaning that if one data center would go down for whatever reason the second one would immediately take over it's not Within 10 seconds, we have an RTO of maximum 10 minutes, so there is some time uh, allowed to, to uh, start up again. Yet, that means that even in those 10 minutes, not a euro would be lost because all of the onboard units in the vehicles would keep buffering, and they can buffer for over a week, so we have quite some, some time to, uh, to catch. Um, this active active setup is, is, of course, important, and we do test that together uh, very regularly, as you know. Um, we do failover tests um, where we then define the test catalog and then the Proximus team together with the Satellic team in a joint call goes through all the elements, follows the runbook and makes sure that we do this failover first of all to data center 2, later on back to data center 1 uh, to make sure that we are uh, fully redundant. In your search for a partner to deliver all of that, uh, Kurt, uh, you ended up with Proximus Next. Can you explain what were the selection criteria for you to make that decision to partner with us for that IT environment? Yeah, yeah we clearly opted for a local partner, although it was not a contractual requirement. And as you can or have seen, um, Satellic is part of the uh, T-Systems group. Um, so ba basically a bit of a competitor, if I may say so. Um, uh, no, we op opted for a local partner because we wanted to really have a, a lead supplier, a well-known supplier with a strong reputation, also with the Belgian governments, because you do a lot of public-private uh, uh, contracts. And that helped us. I mean, the name of Proximus at that point in time was a strong reassurance for the Belgian government to have a robust system in place that would be available at all times. So that was definitely one of our strongest uh, assets. And, and yeah, that's why we uh, went into partnership. Brilliant. Thank you for the continued trust. Maybe one last question, as I already hear some audiences applauding. Um, you mentioned it before, eh? we, we do due diligence tests on what we deliver as a service. You choose to do that in plain daylight, if I can put it like that, in full operation uh, on an active-active scenario. Can you explain a bit, because we went through a failover test uh, a few weeks ago. Can you explain a bit on how that went? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um how we approach this, uh, because before we did the failover tests at, at let's say, uh, low uh, traffic times, uh, Sunday nights, for example. Now we opted to do it really during daytime, because first of all, we're confident that it would, uh, that it would go uh, well. It's not the first time. No, no, we, we've been doing that for, for quite a while, but we, we um, always try to limit the risk, let's say. Now we did it in plain daytime uh, and we had quite a decent preparation. So the Proximus team and the Satellite teams gathered together in, in a workshop where we defined all the requirements, where we uh, created a full testing catalog um, and, and where we created the runbooks. And then at the moment itself, everybody gathered in, in a Teams call where step by step all the steps were uh, uh, spoken through and, and, and followed up, monitored. And basically then, Every step of the project that, that elapsed, we were more and more confident, uh, which was really nice. 
everything was was recorded all the findings uh, were analyzed afterwards and i can say indeed it was a very smooth exercise there was not a single second of impact on the live operations so i can only say that we were very happy with the outcome uh, together with you guys excellent thank you for being here with thank us thank you for having and me and i gladly look forward to a discussion later on uh, during the day thank you to wrap it up ladies and gentlemen customers often ask us the question where to start and typically our answer is let's get around the table as you probably know proximus next is around partnership the essence of our strategy is about partnerships making sure that we partner together with all of you as our customers and leading industry technology players to come up with solutions in many cases we start with advice first and we have we are proud to say that we are proud to say that we have sorry the technology is a bit uh, failing uh, we are proud to say that we have over 500 cloud specialists in our organization that can help you with advice and that can help you with a roadmap on how to take data and applications, mobilize them, modernize them and take them to future locations in public or private uh, cloud environments where we can guarantee not only the operational functionality and the richness of features and technology, but also the security of your data and your applications. I sincerely thank you for the attention. I thank Gregory and Kurt to be on stage with me. Um, and if there should be any questions, the three of us will be around. Don't hesitate to pull on our sleeves and ask a question if appropriate. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. Proximus next. Think possible.